Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Craig and I'm a software developer based in the UK and in this video we're going to learn how we build a full HTML structure or skeleton that every single web page has. Plus we're going to start using our first HTML elements so we'll learn a handful of the most common elements that you'll use every single day. And we'll also make our very first basic web page. Before we start, if you like the content on the channel, then please remember to like, subscribe, and comment as it helps with YouTube's algorithm. Okay, so let's get started. The HTML extension tells the browser that this is a web page. We call it index.html because when a connection is made to a website, most servers will return a landing page, and most servers will provide by default a file named index.html as the landing page. So in other words, index.html is the name used for the home page of a website. There's a great resource here that explains it in more detail and I'll drop the link to that in the description as there really isn't time in this video to go over it at length. I'm happy to discuss it in the, the comments if anyone has any questions, but if I was to go over this entire article in this video, it would double the length of the video. Anyway, we're now in a position where we're ready to start adding some code to our file. Again, I'm going to use some Emmet magic and type an exclamation mark and hit tab. Emmet is a extension that's built into VS Code that allows us to type short snippets or shortcuts for HTML elements or CSS selectors, hit tab and it auto completes them for us. So using Emmet, I've typed the exclamation mark and hit tab and this is actually an HTML boilerplate and it contains a body section here and the body section is where we're going to write the code that renders to the page. Don't worry about what all this extra stuff is at the moment if it is unfamiliar to you as we'll be looking at that very shortly. First I want to concentrate on making a web page that is displayed in the browser. So just for now all you need to know is you can type an exclamation mark hit tab and you will get this structure. So if I open our file with live server by right clicking it and selecting that, any changes that I make automatically update in the browser. So if you want to stop the server, you can just go down here to the bottom of the text editor and click where it says port 5500. To start it again, you just re-click your file and select to open it with live server. So at the moment, our page is totally blank but inside of the body element, which is these two opening and closing body tags, in here I'm going to add an H1 element, which is an element that we saw in the last video. If we remember that the H1 is gonna give us the large heading, the largest heading type actually available to us in HTML. So remember, we need an opening H1 and a closing H1 tag, but again, using Emmet, we can just simply type H1 and hit tab and Emmet will autocomplete and create the element for us. In between the H1 tags, I'm going to add some text content. I'll type hello world and save. We have some HTML content that is displayed now in the browser. Now I'm sure this isn't going to win any Webby awards for website of the year, but if you are following along, then congratulations, you have built your very first web page that the browser recognizes and is displaying. It might not be much right now, but this is the foundation that everything else that comes after is built upon. What if I make a change to the text in my element? If I decide to add, say, an exclamation mark to the end of where it says hello world. I'll do that in our file and save, and we see that live server gets to work and we have an exclamation mark. So let's have a look at this HTML structure that we glossed over just a minute ago. The first thing to know is that we can see lots of the tags that we've been discussing, opening and closing tags that are following the general rule of HTML that we did discuss in the last video. For example, we see this HTML element at the top of the section of HTML code and a closing HTML at the very bottom. This is an HTML element and everything between these tags is the HTML of our file. We'll see it has a lang or language attribute and this is set to en or English. And this attribute just lets the browser know what language the content of the web page is going to be in. The first element that we see inside our HTML tags is our head element. 
Again, we see it has an opening and closing tag, and anything that goes inside of the head of our document is not going to be displayed on the page. We can add stuff like the title of the page, which is in fact what will be displayed in the browser tab. The head can also include other special information, which we will come to later on in a little more detail. But this is typically information for the browser, like where to find external resources that our page is using. Something like a font, that the text of the page will be displayed in or the location of icons that the page is using or an external file that controls the styles of our page. After the head comes the body which contains any content that is to be rendered by the browser and displayed on the page. The information we want visible in the main page could be headings, paragraphs, lists, images, links and so on. It all goes here inside the body and again, we notice that our body element, as we said before, has an opening and closing tag. Back in the head section, we see we have a char set or character set, which is UTF-8. And this is just concerned with character encoding. If you want to know more about that, if you're into that kind of stuff, then please do look it up. But essentially, it just tells the browser to encode any characters in the UTF-8 format. We have also a meta viewport tag here which essentially defines the visible area of a web page and is required to make our web pages responsive and suitable for all devices. We'll cover responsiveness in great detail later on when we get to the CSS videos. Here it is set to the width of the device which it is being viewed upon. The third meta tag makes our web page compatible to be displayed in older browsers like Internet Explorer. And you might notice that these meta tags are all self-closing. They don't have opening and closing tags as they are not wrapping any content or any other elements. So lastly, at the top of the page, we see that we have a doc type. And the doc type declaration is not actually an HTML tag, it is really an instruction to the web browser about what markup language the page is written in. The doc type tag tells the browser that the document type here is going to be HTML and you include this at the very top. So now we've looked at all of that, we can begin adding some more content inside of our body section. As we said, this is the stuff that's actually going to appear on the web page. We already have an H1, so I'll change the text here to say HTML structure. I'll also use this for the title of our page as well. So I'll just copy that and paste it into the title inside our head. And the title element is actually really important for search engines. So if I quickly hop over to Google and just search for, say, news, the options that appear here in the Google search listing come from the titles of the pages. So if we click through to BBC News, we see that the name of the listing in Google also appears in the tab at the top, which, as we've just said, is in the title in the head section. We can double check that further by right clicking and viewing page source and if we go to where it says title then we can see the title matches what is in the tab at the top of the browser. The H1 denotes a main heading as we said. Header tags go all the way from H1 through to H6 and represent the six levels of section headings. It's more common to use H1 through say H3 or H4 H5 and H6 are never used basically, and personally, I rarely even use H4. Mostly it's just H1, H2, and H3, and these should cover all of our needs. If we use another Emmet shortcut, we can type H2 plus H3 plus H4 plus H5 plus H6 and hit tab, and it will create H2 through H6 elements for us. Next, I'm going to hold down Command and Option on Mac, I believe it's Control and Alt on Windows, and then use the downward arrow to add multiple cursors. Now if I type HTML structure, it will add text to each of these headings. In just a second we'll save and we'll be able to compare them, but before we do that I'll add a set of paragraph tags, and inside these I'll type welcome to my very first HTML structure. At this point, if we save, we have six headings descending in size and a short paragraph of text. As you can see, the H5 and H6 are actually smaller than the size of the paragraph text. 
and as I say they are very rarely used and personally I don't think I've ever included either an H5 or an H6 in any project that I can recall. Incredibly rare. So now that we've seen the structure of a basic web page using HTML, we're going to delete everything in our HTML file and code one of our own that looks similar to the structure that we have seen, but this time we will code it manually. So this structure is the standard structure or skeleton or boilerplate that is used in all HTML web pages. We can of course use Emmet to build the structure for us using the exclamation mark shortcut, but we still need to know how to write it ourselves from scratch. So I'll delete everything and save and we're back to having a totally blank web page and a blank HTML file. Also, before we go any further, I'm going to actually disable Emmet so that we can't take shortcuts. I'll go over to the extensions tab here in the sidebar and we want these three dots and we want built-in extensions. And if we go down under features, we can disable Emmet. So we'll do that and we'll reload. So we'll now move on to making the HTML structure. So how do we start? Well, I'm going to begin by defining that our document is going to be an HTML document. And we do this, if you remember, by using the doc type declaration. So we will use angled brackets and inside those an exclamation mark and we'll type doc type HTML. And then we'll add our HTML element so that all of our HTML code can go within these tags. The HTML element represents the root of an HTML document. So it is also sometimes referred to as the root element. All other elements are descendants or children of this element. So all other information in our HTML document must go inside these HTML tags, except for the doc type, which as I said, is not an HTML element, but rather a declaration that we make to the browser. If you remember, the next section that came in an HTML document was the head, and this is followed by the body. Our head element, provides general information again about the document including its title and things like links to style sheets or fonts or external resources. The HTML body element represents the content of an HTML document. There can only be one head and one body element in a document. So I'll add the title again into the head section and the content HTML structure. I'll then go on to add the body element and I will save. And as we reloaded VS Code when we disabled Emmet, we'll have to relaunch live server and we should see our title reflected in the browser. For the purpose of this exercise, we won't add the meta tags. So as easy as that, we have written the basic structure of an HTML page, a head section and a title, each with opening and closing tags, plus the body section, which will hold the content. Presently, we have a completely blank page, and this is because it's currently just a structure and is devoid of any content. So if I ask you now to add a few words of text to appear in the browser, could you do that? So pause the video, try that, and add, say, an H1 and a paragraph with some text of your choosing. Okay, I hope you managed that, and I hope you added it inside the body section, which, of course, is going to hold our content. I'll add an H1 with the text of Hello World. And once I've done that, I'll just add a P element or paragraph element with the text. This is a paragraph. That's simple enough. And again, when we save, we see the results displayed in the browser. I have previously mentioned using comments in the Emmet video, but for those that missed that, Commenting is something that is universal among all programming languages as well as in CSS and HTML. Commenting our code allows us to leave notes, instructions, reminders or directions for ourselves which can help us out at a later date when we're editing or we need to um, remind ourselves what a particular piece of code does or we need to explain our code to somebody else that's looking at it. So I could put above the H1 this is a large heading. You write a comment by adding a less than sign, followed by an exclamation mark and two dashes. Then at the end of your comment, you add two dashes and a greater than sign. Also, rather than committing to deleting any code before we're sure, 
we can just comment it out. So it's still there for us to refer to or for us to bring back in later. But once we comment it, it will not appear in the browser. We can highlight what we want to comment out and use a shortcut by pressing Control or Command and the forward slash. If we save, we can now see in the browser that our page is blank again. Okay, so I think this is a good place to stop. We've got live server running. We've fully explored the structure of an HTML document, the doc type, the root HTML element, the head and the body. We've seen H1 to H6 heading elements that represent the six levels of headings in HTML, though we would typically only use H1 through H3, and sometimes very occasionally we'd use H4. And we've also seen the paragraph element. Finally, we looked at how we go about commenting our code. So so we're making steady progress. So well done. Your first simple web page is beginning to take shape. We've gone from knowing absolutely nothing to having some content displaying in the browser, which is a great start. This work, as simple as it is right now, lays the foundations for everything that is going to come next. In the next video, we'll focus on the head and the various meta tags which it can contain. If you're finding the content useful or are just enjoying my dulcet tones, then please remember to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, drop some comments if you want to um, say hi. So, thanks for watching, guys. You could be watching Netflix after all. So, thanks once again, and I'll see you in the next one.